When it comes to building muscle, rep ranges don't actually matter, but understanding why is extremely important if your goal is to build muscle maximally. And that's what I want to share with you in this video, what the research actually says about rep ranges and how you should be training if your goal is hypertrophy. According to this 2021 study by Schoenfeld et al, using any rep range from 1 to 5 reps, 8 to 12, or 15 and above, as long as the loads are heavier than 30% of your one rep max produces similar rates of muscle growth in any demographic. Thus, the researchers concluded that there is no ideal hypertrophy zone. These findings confirmed an earlier systematic review and meta-analysis where they found and claimed that muscle hypertrophy can be equally achieved across a spectrum of loading ranges. This study looked at the effects of low load training where they perform more than 15 reps, moderate load where they perform 9 to 15 reps, and high load where they perform less than 8 reps. They found similar muscle hypertrophy gains among all participants. Another study arrived at the same conclusion, reporting no significant differences for muscle hypertrophy across a wide spectrum of loads and rep ranges. And finally, we have yet another study concluding that muscle hypertrophy is similar irrespective of the magnitude of the load, which again corresponds to high, moderate, and low rep ranges. Now, the evidence seems to overwhelmingly prove that rep ranges don't matter for muscle growth. But while rep ranges are not important, reps are. We've established that similar hypertrophy gains were produced whether lifting with moderate to heavy loads without going to failure or lifting lighter loads while reaching failure or close to it. The question then becomes, what condition was met that allowed the participants to produce similar rates of muscle growth despite the differences in rep range? To put it simply, they all achieved high threshold motor unit recruitment, and these motor units are responsible for activating the muscle fibers that are most responsive for growth. So it boils down to muscle activation. And this is confirmed by studies showing that to achieve sufficient levels of muscle activation, you either have to lift weights around 60 to 90% of your one rep max, or for lighter weights, you should push very close to failure. Thus, in practical terms, the key lies in the level of effort you exert during your training sessions. Simply put, as long as you put in a high degree of effort either through lifting heavy enough or training to or close to failure, you will make gains in muscle size. When you're lifting heavy, muscle fiber recruitment is already high, thus training to failure is an imperative, but the closer to failure you get, the more hypertrophy stimulating reps you'll achieve. When you're lifting moderate to light loads, muscle Muscle fiber recruitment in the first several reps is low. After the initial reps, fatigue mechanisms will then kick in to drive up muscle fiber recruitment. Thus, it becomes more important to reach failure or close to it. Think of it as a sliding scale. Heavier weights permit greater distance from failure while still inducing hypertrophy, whereas moderate to lighter loads demand a closer proximity to failure. That said, I'd like to offer a few caveats. First, high rep workouts tend to produce higher rates of fatigue and muscle damage through metabolite accumulation. This won't only require longer rest periods between sets, but this may also require more days between workouts as it will produce more soreness. So, if you don't have much time to spend in the gym or prefer a higher training frequency, too much high rep training may not be ideal. On the other hand, heavy lifting places a greater strain on your connective tissue and joints. Doing too many heavy sets can lead to overuse injuries that'll keep you out of the gym for a while. And with this in mind, you might also require a spotter every single set, which can become a bit impractical. So, in pursuit of optimal training, it would make sense to mix your rep ranges, alternating between light, moderate, and heavy loads. In fact, some research advocates for versatility in rep ranges to promote even better muscle growth. So, there you have it. While rep ranges don't matter, rep quality does. Whether it's heavy lifting, pump sessions, high rep endurance work, or a mix of them all, the key is to choose a routine that you enjoy and can stick to. Did you find this video helpful? If so, 
click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you wanna keep optimizing your training, watch our video on progressive overload. There, you'll learn the best way to progressively overload your training so that you can keep getting bigger and stronger while avoiding plateaus. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.